And now we come to the matters selected for topical issue. And the first issue is in the, the deputy for. Uh, Deputy Owen Murphy, uh, to the Minister for Communications, Energy and Natural Resources, the Broadcasting Authority of Ireland's interpretation of the BAI's Code of Fairness, Objectivity and Impartiality in News and Current Affairs. And the Deputy has four minutes. Thank you, Chair, and thank you, Minister, for taking this topical issue. Uh, Minister, I believe we have a problem with the Broadcasting Authority of Ireland, and uh, I think we have a problem with how it interprets its own Code of Fairness, Objectivity and Impartiality in News and Current Affairs. Um, and in particular, into some, related to some recent rulings by the BAI under that code, which have led some people to interpret those rulings not as fair and objective as one would hope, but as daft and depressing, and which have led the National Union of Journalists to say that the authority was acting in a manner that is harmful to the public interest. Now, that's a very serious charge to level from the NUJ uh, against the authority. Now, recently there were two, and in my view, there were spurious complaints about radio shows discussing marriage equality issues. Now, these two complaints were upheld, and they were regarding the requirement to present a balanced view. Now, these were not current affairs shows discussing an item on which a referendum campaign is currently underway, when there is a duty to be objective, there is a, a duty to include all sides in that debate. Uh, these were not debates. One was an RTE show in January of this year, which was a program discussing civil partnerships, people telling their personal stories. It was a, a human interest piece. And the other show was on News Talk in June, and it was about the Dublin Gay Pride Parade. People talking about the celebration of people and their rights, rights that they do not currently have, as it so happens. But people for, for too long have been outcast by some in Irish society, including the state. And thankfully, we're now moving to correct that with a referendum next year. But, but these were not programmes holding referendum uh, debates in the context of a referendum campaign. These were not debates. There is no referendum campaign underway. These were popular and important radio shows giving voice to people who have a different point of view to others. And I hope in time that it will become a normal point of view. But the Broadcasting Authority of Ireland said no. They said you can't have someone on radio talking about their aspirations to get married without having someone, another guest or a presenter, to challenge those aspirations, to challenge their hopes, their dreams, their fears. And I don't think that's right, Minister. And not only does it set a worrying precedent for free speech on our airwaves in this country and in the media, but it also lacks any common sense, in my view. And then we hear uh, Senator Sabone uh, challenging the authority of the BAI, and it would appear rightly so. The government has failed to make appointments to the authority, and as a result, they are having difficulties obtaining a quorum for their meetings. And as she so succinctly put it, who is calling the shots at the BAI and who is behind these rulings? And I would ask, where is the legitimacy in these rulings if there are governance issues at the authority? Now, the Irish Council for Civil Liberties has strongly criticised the BAI, saying it has used these complaints to chill public discussion about equality. And that's a very serious thing to say. Now a referendum on marriage equality is coming. I think it's coming. Uh, it could have come sooner, but it's coming, and I'm looking forward to voting yes in that referendum. But we have to ask ourselves today, is the authority fit to make rulings on future complaints that will arise between now and that referendum campaign beginning? And of course, once the referendum is underway. And so I think that we need to move quickly to address these issues, both with governance issues and the authority, if they exist, but also in how the authority is interpreting those rulings under its own code. I mean, if they were not written uh, to chill public debate, if they were not written to prevent people from expressing their own point of view uh, in a normal way about something they're passionate about, without having to bring someone in to then put them down, um, then maybe those, those, that code needs to be amended. And I would like to ask the Minister's point of view uh, on both those issues. Thank you. Minister, respond. Four minutes, Hurley, I thank um, Deputy Murphy for raising this issue. Firstly, I should point out that the Broadcasting Authority of Ireland, the BAI, is an independent statutory body which has, has as one of its functions under 20, Section 26 of the Broadcasting Act 2009 the preparation of broadcasting codes or rules. Accordingly, I, as Minister for Communications, Energy and Natural Resources, have no function in this matter, and my department has no role in the consultation process or in the actual drawing up of codes. Under Section 42 of the Broadcasting Act, the BAI is required to draw up and enforce a series of codes for broadcasters on the basis of a list set out in Section 42.2 of the 2009 Act. The first two items on this list deal with news broadcasting, including objectivity and impartiality in news broadcasting and on the broadcast treatment of current affairs. News and current affairs content broadcast on Irish, on Irish radio and television is required to comply with the 2009 Act and with the BAI's Code of Fairness, Objectivity and Impartiality in News and Current Affairs. The statutory requirements and the BAI's code require news and current affairs to be fair, objective and impartial. 
The BAI have prepared detailed guidance notes to accompany the code to assist broadcasters in their interpretation. The notes are provided as an aid to understanding the intent of the principles and the rules and the manner of their application in a broadcast context. One issue about which there has been some discussion recently is the role of the presenter. The guidance notes recognise the vital role of a programme presenter. They also highlight, however, that the role comes with attendant responsibilities. The aim of the code in this regard is to seek to prevent a partisan position being advocated by a presenter and to guard against a presenter using his or her programme to pursue an agenda via comments, choice of guests or otherwise, such that a biased view on an issue is articulated. The code also sets out the manner in which complaints may be made about a particular programme. Any person is entitled to make a complaint about news and current affairs content. Complaints should in the first instance be directed to the broadcaster to consider further to their own code of practice for complaints handling, or further to that code. Section 47 of the Act requires broadcasters to consider all such complaints. Complainants may refer complaints to the BAI if they are not happy with the response provided by the broadcaster or where the broadcaster does not respond. A common issue arising in complaints dealing with fairness, objectivity and impartiality in news and current affairs is that of balance. The BAI has stated on many occasions that there is no automatic requirement for each topic to be balanced by an opposing view. While there are some instances where balance may be required, for example in the case of a closely fought referendum, an automatic requirement is considered inappropriate. This has been made clear in a number of codes and documents published by the BAI since its inception in 2009. I should say, um, before I conclude, uh, Kahirli, that in relation to the uh, codes and the codes uh, that are required to be followed by broadcasters, which are, which are um, uh, uh, published by the BAI, the requirements in relation to balance and fairness are not confined to the period of a referendum. There are particular rules that relate to the period of a referendum, but there are general rules in relation to fairness and balance that are not confined to the question of a referendum period. And I just um, might just briefly just quote from, for example, uh, uh, Rule 22 of the uh, BAI Code, and I don't express any view here at all, Akihir, in relation to any particular complaint or issue. I'm simply just for the information of the Deputy in the House, point out that Rule 22 states, and I quote, a presenter and or a reporter on a current affairs program shall not express his or her own views on matters that are either, that are either a public controversy or the subject of current public debate such that a partisan position is advocated." Unquote. And you know, it may be that from time to time listeners, politicians or otherwise, when they hear a program or view something on television, regard a particular point of view as one that, um, let us say, they are less comfortable with. The fact is that we need to have a third party here to determine complaints in an objective way and not for it to be done for example by politicians or otherwise. The Oireachtas sets up a third party to do this and I think that whereas people may have their own views as to the outcome of this or that complaint, we should support the independent body that's set up by this Oireachtas to make these decisions on the basis of complaints made brought you know, freely pursuant to the codes and that we should support the BAI in that regard. That doesn't mean we have to agree with all of their decisions any more than we would agree with the decisions of courts or other quasi-judicial bodies, but they should be given the freedom to do the job we ask them to do. Deputy Supplementary. Uh, thank you, Chair. Uh, Minister, I completely uh, you know, respect that idea that the authority must be independent and that we need a third party to rule on these things, but what if that third party is wrong? Or, or what if we believe it's acting irresponsibly or inappropriately? I mean, who is the authority then responsible to? What if in setting up its code of conduct as it was given permission to under the Act and according to specifications in the Act, it didn't set up the code as it was intended to be set up under the legislation? Is there not a, a point at which the Minister can return to review that legislation or to review the authority or indeed review its own code? And I mean, in, in, in your response, which I do appreciate, you talk about instances where balance would be required for in the case of a, a closely fought referendum where an automatic requirement is considered, or sorry, an automatic requirement is considered inappropriate. If, it, if it's a closely fought referendum, it's not that case. But isn't there a contradiction then in these rulings on these two specific issues? And they're both on the same issue. It's about debates on marriage equality. One was where people were talking about um, they had a civil partnership and it was a year on or a couple of years since they had had, had a civil partnership and what that meant to them in their lives and how they looked forward to marriage equality. And the other was the, the gay pride parade in Dublin. Of course you're going to talk about marriage equality in the context of that debate. And of course there shouldn't be an automatic expectation that there should be a contrary view in that. And how anyone could interpret the code of the BAI to expect that there should be in those two instances and both to do with marriage equality. 
It doesn't look good for the BAI minister. And where there are legitimate public concerns, and there are on this issue, because a lot of people have been talking about it, where is the mechanism in here by which we can say, well, hold on a second, there may be a, a legitimate reason for us not to interfere with the independence of the board or the authority, but to actually look, is it acting in accordance with the legislation that set it up as we intended it to act? Because when you have the Irish Council of Civil Liberties you know, worrying publicly about a chill effect being put on public debate by some of these rulings, and when you have the, the National U Union of Journalists you know, talking about this decision being harmful to public interest, we can't just sit back and say it's an independent entity, we set it up in 2009 and it has its code, it drafted it itself, we, we can't get involved here. We have to consider that, we have to go back and see what mechanisms we can use to make sure it's acting in accordance with the best interests of public debate. And as for the, 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 the other part of the code which you, you quoted, quoted about issues of controversy, this isn't an issue of controversy. Uh, some people might have uh, a difficulty accepting the way our society is going. But in the context of a debate, or sorry, not a debate, in the context of a public interest peace, a year before any referendum may even be held, and, and someone talking about an event they're participating in, and in that part of that discussion, presenting a view on something that may happen in the future, and the, and the broadcasts are doing the same, that's not controversial. And it shouldn't, it shouldn't take the BAI and the BA shouldn't be able to come in and say that was inappropriate and to rule against them okay. in that. Deputy, oh, thank you. Thank you point just simply with no. Trespassing on the particular issue, I would just simply say to the Deputy on the House, where there is a difference in point of view, there is likely to be a controversy. So the fact that you have a particular viewpoint on an issue and others have a different view, that would seem to point to the existence of a controversy. And the fact that you know, one disagrees with a particular decision and I emphasize again, I'm pains to emphasize, I'm not trespassing on the particular issue here, but the fact that you or I or others might think that something is wrong or might disagree with the decision made does not impugn the, uh, the, it seems to me, the integrity of the body or the third party making that decision, the fact that one disagrees with it. The whole point is to take it away from the political system and to have it or from, you know, or from any, any uh, 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 third party other than one that is set up properly under legislation. And I have to say, clearly, that, that I respect the deputy raising this issue, but in, in, in relation to his point about acting, whether the BAI is acting in accordance with legislation, I have no reason to believe, no reason to believe from anything that I've seen the BAI do in, these, in this regard, or indeed anything with respect to the deputy that he has said this afternoon, that would suggest to me remotely that the BAI is not acting in accordance with the legislation. No reason to assume that. And in relation to the codes which the BAI itself um, have, have published, they were done on the basis, I understand it, of a lengthy consultation period in respect of those codes. So I'm not sure if, uh, if the issue is in relation to the code or the particular outcome. Can I simply just say finally though, Akir, because it's relevant to today, uh, the government at its meeting this morning agreed on my nomination to appoint a new, five new members to the Broadcasting Authority because the term of office of the previous authority had come to an end. Um, and I would like to thank the outgoing members of the BAI in, in, under the leadership of Bob Collins. The new body will take up office, uh, the new members will take up office immediately under the chairmanship of Professor Porrick Travers.